What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another SK Wealth Academy podcast. Now, I apologize that for now, I'm only uploading these podcasts to my YouTube channel because I just don't have the capacity to upload all of these podcasts to uh, iTunes and Podbean as I have in the past. So as I already mentioned, when I have that capacity to do so because I'm around day on or 50 of my international travel lockdown. So it's almost like that scenario in which you hear someone say, if you could only have five items on a deserted island to survive, what five items would you have? So just think about that. That's about my situation. So I just don't have the resources to upload it. So when I finally do, and it looks like it'll be another couple months before I am granted my freedom as a human being on planet earth so i might actually have like a backlog of 20 podcasts or so to upload by the time i can finally do so but today i am going to talk about the great global economic reset reset in air quotes because there is a reset right now that's being planned at the current time by members of the world economic forum who include such a stellar, and I say that sarcastically, of course, people in the world like European Central Bank President Christine Lagarde, who has some kind of fascination with occult numerology, uh, U.S. President Donald Trump, who somehow has fooled the whole world, just like Obama fooled the whole world, when, or not the whole world, but Obama actually fooled more people. He fooled the whole world, President Donald Trump has just fooled a great deal of Americans who, for some odd reason, even though he's been so transparent, still believes that Donald Trump is anti-establishment for some reason. Uh, German Chancellor Angela Merkel uh, and many other state leaders from around the world, in addition to many of the big wig corporate CEOs around the world. So these are the members of the WEF, the World Economic Forum, that have been pushing this idea of some massive global economic reset in response to the massive global suffering that they created through their coordinated economic lockdown of nearly 8 billion people on planet Earth. So though the great global economic reset is being disguised as humanitarian efforts to help us, I assure you, this is not the real mission of this reset. So this is what I'm going to speak about in this particular podcast is the real mission of this reset. So what is the real mission of the WEF Global Economic Reset, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. So to begin, though I've been stating that the draconian non-science-based economic lockdowns being implemented around the world in response to the coronavirus is tied to the global financial meltdown that started this year, or obviously it started in January 2020, and through a patchwork of throwing trillions of dollars in euros, central bankers again kicked the can down the road for a little while longer in stopping the global financial meltdown that started earlier this year and they narrowly avoided a complete financial collapse this past march of which i wrote extensively about so i'll put in the podcast show notes on youtube and uh you can go check out the links to that article if you've never read it and even though the majority of people still fail still fail to this day to make the obvious connection between the COVID-1984 lockdowns and the efforts of the 0.1% of the parasitic ruling class to reshape our world into a new world economic order with a permanent, permanent nobility and surf class and the absolute destruction and devastation of the middle class, which they have used the the their COVID-1984 economic lockdowns to really aggressively expedite that part of their plan. So because just the other uh, earlier this month in August, uh, I heard uh, that 100 million people as a result 
of these immoral, unethical, unconscionable economic lockdowns as part of this virus have pushed 100 million people in this world, not, in, not into poverty, but extreme poverty. We all know what extreme poverty mean, means. That means you're going to be food insecure. You're not going to be sure where your next meal is coming every single day. And with that additional 100 million pushed into extreme poverty, before the lockdown started, we had 130 million people that were already food insecure that were being pushed into possible starvation by the end of this year. So to add to that to another 100 million, so now we're up to the 230 million people that by the end of this year could be on the verge of starving to death, which is one of the most horrible ways to die because your body literally eats itself. But I'm sure that these 0.1% parasitic leaders uh, the names of whom I just mentioned will be there applauding and laughing as the 260 million people starve to death. But for those of you that can't fathom this, this is because me and you, we're not like them. You have to understand, these are a totally different breed of people that are misanthropic, that hate humanity, that would love to see three, 400, 500 million people starve to death. They do not care. So, again, uh, when we look at this new world economic order, they are moving so aggressively now to usher in. What does this entail? Okay. Well, for those of you that always say, oh, look at all these conspiracy theorists. Well, if you go, if you had the brains to go... To, and I know mo most every one of you watching this, this doesn't apply to you. These, this just applies to the people out there that have no capacity for independent thought. Because obviously, if you're watching this, this doesn't apply to you. But you are less than the 1% of this population that actually thinks for themselves, is not willing to accept and digest everything that is force-fed down our throat by the mass media as truth. So the World Economic Forum spells out their dastardly, dastardly mission in plain sight on their website. I'll read to you what it says. I'm going to go to it right now. Quote, the changes we have already seen in response to COVID-19 prove that a reset of our economic and social foundations is possible. Think about that, what that implies. They say it proves that a reset of our economic and social foundations is possible. Not that a reset of our medical and healthcare system is possible. Look at what they're looking at. They're looking at to use this. <laughs> they're looking to use this to reset our economic and social foundations. Now, they said every country from the United States to China must participate. So again, for those of you that are fall victim again to this bilateral war, between different nations in this world, the U.S. versus Russia, U.S. versus China, the 0.1% are recruiting everyone. They see everyone as equal. They don't see, oh, the U.S. is more free than China, so we're going to recruit China's participation in our reset of the economic and social foundations in this world. No, they said, look, everyone is equal. Everyone must participate. So not only must China participate, the United States must participate. Let me continue. And every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. Of course, finance is a given. So they don't, they don't mention finance, but that's a given. In short, we need a great reset of capitalism, end quote. To cement the fact that the World Economic Forum is fear-mongering about a virus that is only a fraction as dangerous as they have claimed and spread throughout the world. So we have all these Karens out there. That's the word. You know, it's so funny because this is the kind of devil-controlled, uh, upside-down world we live in. The people that actually don't want to wear a mask because there's no science behind the mask being effective as far as not spreading the transmission of COVID, right? There's been no scientific evidence, right? In fact, uh, I, I saw an article earlier this month that said three leading epidemiologists in this world say there's no evidence. And that is the science-based uh, strategies that 
countries like Sweden, Norway, Finland that require no masks, Amsterdam, because all their health officials have come out and said this. There's no scientific evidence that wearing a mask slows down the spread of the virus. So they don't require the wearing of the mask in their countries. And the people that don't want to wear a mask in the United States, they call carers, but the real carers are the ones that are just screaming and yelling at the people not wearing a mask because these are the people that are mentally weak that can't think for themselves that are basically accepting non-science-based disinformation from the mass media and from uh, weasels like uh, fraudulent Dr. Fauci instead of listening to other doctors that are giving real scientific evidence and facts. So again, they state, quote, the World Economic Forum. There are many reasons to pursue a great reset, but the most urgent is COVID-19, 84. How, having already led to hundreds of thousands of deaths, the pandemic represents one of the worst public health crises in recent history, end quote. Again, so here's an example of them trying to use a crisis they created because there's no crisis in deaths. There's no crisis in the number of deaths around the world. There's... It's because the deaths have been going down all around the world in August. That's why they concentrate on just the numbers of infections around the world increasing. And not only that, it's Sweden, right? People say, oh, well, you have to protect the elderly. As I wrote an article that received more than 130,000 reads when I produced the charts of the mortality rates of, of COVID-1984 in Sweden among, among various age demographics by far and away the largest number of deaths was above age 80. do you know what the average lifespan in sweden is for men is 82. i can't remember for females females is you know always higher no matter what nation so say females it was 86. well these are people that were already going to die anyways because of natural mortality rates and they then because they were infected with COVID when they would naturally die, they're counted as COVID deaths. So even that is, is skewed beyond, you know, they're being counted as COVID deaths, but it's probably way skewed because these are people that are coming to their natural age of death in Sweden per their historical rate of mortality for men and women. So this claim that is made on the World Economic Forum site is complete bunk. It's a complete lie. The most urgent re reason for the Great Economic Reset mission has been the, their complete failure in providing any leadership except leading us down a dark abyss of economic misery. That has been the only leadership that they've demonstrated, which again is part of the overall big plan. And their, their complete failure of this fractional reserve fiat currency system that has already led to plummeting purchasing power of dozens of fiat currencies around the world. People don't even realize like the Syrian pound has been totally destroyed. The Argentine peso has been destroyed. The Brazilian real has been destroyed. The Indonesian rupiah has been completely destroyed. The Indian rupee has been completely destroyed. Like there's dozens of fiat currencies around the world before this COVID-1984 economic lockdown happened that had already been destroyed with including the hyperinflation of several currencies just in the past five years, namely the Zimbabwe dollar, the Venezuelan Bolivar, and the Lebanese pound. So this is what's going on. This is what they're trying to hide from us, the fact that they were leading us down a path of ec economic misery and complete failure, which now they're using the COVID-1984 pandemic, which is just a fraction of uh, as dangerous as they claim it is to healthy people with strong immune systems. And furthermore, the virus is even far from the most urgent or dangerous global pandemic. In 2017, let me just, uh, 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 let me just educate a lot of you out there who have never thought why has there been such strict economic lockdowns in regard to this one. Far more people in America have died from more, more dangerous pandemics. Okay, 2017, this U.S. Centers for Disease Control reported in America alone, I'm not even talking about the world, okay, America alone, 
more than 70,000 people died from drug overdoses. And most of these deaths being uh, linked to opiate overdoses with high-grade heroin imported from Afghanistan, courtesy of U.S. military protection in their poppy fields, and from the aggressive marketing of their billionaire colleague Raymond Sackler and the Sackler family of OxyContin. Now, these deaths were never painted as a public health pandemic. Why not? Additionally, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control reported approximate 600,000 600, cigarette and alcohol abuse related deaths in America every single year. So the total number of deaths from drug, opiate abuse, cigarette and alcohol abuse, we're now up to 668,000 deaths per year. Now add to the CDC estimate, add to this figure, the CDC estimate of an additional additional 635,000 deaths every single year in America from heart disease caused by smoking and poor diet related obesity. And this figure skyrockets to over 1.3 million deaths every single year in America. Over 1.3 million deaths every single year. This equates to 3,000 570 deaths every day from the most dangerous pandemic in America. Not COVID-1984, but just from the pandemic of opiates, alcohol, cigarettes, and obesity alone. That is the most dangerous pandemic facing Americans every single year. So how come there are no lockdowns? How come there's no complete ban, bans of tobacco-related and alcohol-related products? A fast food. Why? 1.3 million People in America die every year from this much more dangerous and severe pandemic than coronavirus. And even though we know the ruling class have created artificially high mortality rates for COVID-1984, because off the top of my head, I could think Texas has been shown to be lying about their number. I'm not talking speculation. There is documented proof of them lying about the number of, of the COVID uh, deaths in Texas, in Florida, in New York, in Wa the state of Washington, in uh, Colorado. So actually, there's at least five, right? And so we know the ruling class have created artificially high mortality rates for coronavirus that are unrealistic. But even using these artificially high fake overinflated death counts in America... As of August 10th of 2020, there were only 162,481 deaths from coronavirus. This equals a daily death rate since January 1st, beginning of this year, because we all know that the infection started, the first infections were prior. So I'll, I'll, I'll even formulate a more biased high mortality rate from coronavirus. I won't even go back to when the first cases, the first infections were believed to have happened in America in November of 2019 or possibly even October. I'll just start counting from January 1st of this year. You know that what that amounts to? 732 deaths per day from the virus. How many deaths per day are we uh, experiencing from that much greater drug overdose and obesity pandemic that exists in America and is being completely undressed uh, unaddressed by the 0.1% of the parasitic ruling class in America, it was 3,570 deaths per day compared to 732. So what is that? Like one-fifth, right? Seven times five is, is 3,500, right? So there's 20% the rate of deaths per day from a much greater pandemic that is five times worse. But yet, because this pandemic... Is caused by the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry and the agriculture industry, all industries that benefit the 0.1% parasitic class, they will zip their mouth and never address that pandemic. So again, the drug abuse and gluttony, poor nutrition pandemic has never been identified as a pandemic by this these parasitic, parasitic weasels that rule our world. So the answer, of course, like I said, big pharma, big tobacco, big agriculture. They're multi-billion dollar industries that if you address this pandemic, even though they leave a wake of destruction of more than 3,570 deaths per day in America alone, 
you will never see the amount of hysteria raised by the parasitic ruling class about this pandemic and the necessity to solve this pandemic, which you would save far more lives, far more lives than addressing this viral pandemic. Just by addressing that, that, those other pandemics, you'll never see it. You'll never see it because why? The 0.1% I've already told you, they're a parasitic, misanthropic group of people that hate humanity. So continuing, the World Economic Forum members state on their website that the pandemic of this virus combined with the pandemic of increasing wealth inequality around the world, the increasing wealth in inequality, which by the way, they are solely responsible for, quote, will deepen and leave the world even less sustainable, less equal, and more fragile. Incremental measures and ad hoc fixes will not suffice to prevent this scenario. We must build entirely new foundations for our economic and social systems. End quote. So you can see what they're doing. They are basically using this artificial crisis they created from their unnecessary economic lockdown in response to this non-serious virus in order to usher in their new world order. We don't need new foundations for our economic and social systems. What we do, as far as banking, we need like sound money instead of the immoral, unsound monetary system we have. But what we need, as far as the new foundations for economic and social systems, they're not going to give it to us because the new ones we need would be ones that would give us more freedom and liberation. The ones they're going to introduce is going to take away our pri whatever little privacy we have left, gone. Whatever little freedom we have left, gone. So their foundations, which they're going to bring into existence, are going to be foundations that are going to ruin our freedom and privacy and enable them to uh, really get that stranglehold around our throats and choke us out to death. So of course, this same statement follows the same blueprint they've been using since the panic of 1907. Because as you remember in America, we had an economic panic in 1907. Well, not like, you know, any of you are, were alive back, maybe some of you, I don't know, maybe I have some uh, elderly people that listen to my podcast. So you were born and alive and, and of an age where you can still remember, but if you were, Congratulations, because that would mean you're 113, 14, 15 years old, right? So actually more than that, because you would have to be amongst the oldest people in the world. So probably there's no one watching my podcast that will remember the panic of 1997. So I, when I say you recall, I mean just from history, right? From knowing your history, that the trigger that sparked that panic was the great San Francisco earthquake of 1906. So that was a natural crisis that triggered that economic crisis. Although, the, you know, the parasitic ruling class doesn't care. Sometimes they will create an artificial crisis if they can have a natural crisis. And in this case, we did have a natural crisis, but they blew it out of proportion, right? So the, the crisis of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, they made it a thousand times more serious than it really is and then they fooled the rest of the world into believing this is some great crisis when it really is not so they stated that extended lockdowns inspired by their very successful fear-mongering campaign over the severity of this virus in their exact words they said what they learned from this by creating this fake crisis not a fake virus because the virus is real the virus is serious for elderly people, not for the healthy with healthy immune systems. They say what they learned is, quote, businesses and individuals can be forced to abandon practices long claimed to be essential from fre frequent air travel to working in an office, end quote. So look, they, what they're doing now, if you think, oh, this will end in a month, this will end in two months, this, no, what they're doing now to us, they want to normalize forever. So no, the ruling class didn't show us how essential business practices can be abandoned. They forced, they involuntarily forced millions of people across the world to abandon 
tens of millions of businesses that will now be permanently shuttered, ruining the lives of hundreds upon hundreds of millions of people worldwide. So the parasitic ruling class only showed us their willingness to execute a level of pure evil. They only exposed how evil they are because they basically enforced economic lockdowns with devastating consequences upon a marshmallow population that does not know how to resist tyranny and fight back anymore. So the World Economic Forum, they see this and they say, hey, we can even usher in this, our new world economic order. We could condense that period. We might have thought that was going to take the next three years, but we can cut that in half and in the next 18 months, get it into place. So that's what they're doing right now because of uh, these feminine like men. You ever see that movie Fight Club where they say like nobody of where, where Tyler Durden gave his homework assignment to the members of Fight Club to get into a fight. And they said, you'll find it really hard to do because people will do whatever they can to avoid a physical fight. So even though uh, in, in that comical scene, people spray water on other people, slap positions out of their hand, push them over, no one would get in a fight. And they just ran away. So this is the kind of emasculated men that we're dealing with around the world today. And do you think that we can rely on them to fight against tyranny? So the World Economic uh, Forum states that in order to deploy their great... And I know fighting does not make you a man. That's not what I'm not saying. I'm not saying you're not masculine if, if you won't physically fight someone. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the, the uh, weak weakness in these people from a mental standpoint. Their mentality is so weak. So, again, World Economic Forum is stating that we must grant them more power and more authority over us. The same exact same claim, claim central bankers used during the 2008 global financial crisis to seize the type of absolute power that enabled them to execute dozens of policies secretly this year without any oversight. So whereas back in 2008, they had to go get congressional approval, Bank of England had to go get parliament pr approval. They don't have to do this anymore because in 2008, they used a crisis to consolidate their power and, and become more tyrannical in the nature of their authoritative powers. So that's why people don't even realize that these circumstances are the same as 2008 because they don't have to go through Congress. It's not on the news as far as what they are doing. And of course, if we observe the pillars for the Great Reset as laid out by the World Economic Forum members, they all seem benign at first glance. But the devil is in the details. And the details reveal that these pillars are designed to increase surveillance and control over us. Look at what they say is the mission of the World Economic Forum Great Reset. Quote, as we enter a unique window of opportunity to shape the recovery, this initiative will offer insights to help inform all those determining the future state of global relations, the direction of national economies, the priorities of societies, the nature of business models, and the management of a global commons. Well, who are these people determining that? The 0.1%. And although the above mission sounds beneficent, as I said, they always have been duplicitous in their statements. Their statements always sound benign, but the mission behind their benign sounding statements have always been evil and malignant. So therefore, it would be extremely foolish of any of us to believe that their global reset has any type of humanitarian characteristics to it. It's completely misanthropic. So from experience and observing the dealings of the members of that forum, we know that the statement only disguises their opportunism and thirst to engage in crisis capitalism, which is the ability to make rapid significant changes in a very condensed window of time under crisis conditions that would otherwise be impossible to implement during a normal functioning period of time. This is why we keep seeing second wave, third wave, fourth wave, fifth wave. As long as people are stupid enough to believe them, they will keep rolling out further waves of this coronavirus because people are morons. 
for the most part. And for example, Bill Gates' desire to vaccinate every single human being on planet Earth with his COVID-1984 vaccine will likely be an extremely dangerous one, given that the, you know, the development of this vaccine has not only been rushed, and then therefore will likely, likely lack the proper timeline of clinical trials. You know, everything has been condensed from the phase one clinical trials to the phase two clinical trials. And the, that's only the beginning part of the problem. We may never even develop with all these different pharmaceutical companies that Bill Gates has uh, funded through his Gavi Alliance, we might not even receive an effective vaccine, right? Because there was no effective vaccine uh, developed for any of these other corona-like uh, pandemics that afflicted the world, like the MERS virus and the SARS virus and, and H1N1. So in any event, the... World Economic Forum has laid out guidelines for this vaccine. And let me read it to you. Three. Number one, distributing the vaccine will require one of the largest supply chain capacities for fighting pandemics ever built. Who's going to get that contract? Probably Amazon. So Dr. Evil will become even richer and reap billions of dollars of more profits. Eradicating COVID-19 around the world would require dis distributing between 7 to 19 billion vaccine doses. And blockchain is integral to making it equitable. Not to making it equitable, blockchain is integral to tracking us all. That's what they want to do. This is about surveillance. And, of course, forcing a vaccine that might not even be safe upon us all if we want freedom to move around this world, which is just ridiculous. Who is that going to enrich? Bill Gates. And then the third thing they say is blockchain will be essential to equitable, efficient distribution and leverage to a scale never seen before again. Massive surveillance and data gathering on all of us. So it appears that the ruling class desires to use the very technology that was supposed to liberate us, remember, because all the cryptocurrencies were developed off the blockchain to physically enslave anyone that refuses this vaccine. And as well, they're going to use it to financially enslave us by forcing the global population onto a 100% digital monetary platform. So let me just read you some of the members of the World Economic Forum that are advocating for this and advocating moving as much as possible of the global and economic business platform that exists in the physical world onto the digital world where all behaviors, all money flow, every single thing purchased from all 8 billion citizens on planet Earth can be monitored so no one has any privacy anymore. That includes members of the Communist People's Bank of China, Microsoft, of course, Bill Gates, MasterCard, who was responsible for the financial enslavement and tracking of Indians because MasterCard had a, played a huge role in digitizing the Indian economy with rapidity and speed, and British Petroleum, responsible for the overthrow of democratically elected leaders in Iran and around the world. So it's the worst of the worst people that are involved in this. And the worst part of this great economic reset is that once the world's money flow is 100% digitized and traceable, this will spell the end to the little sliver of independence that still exists in the political process. Okay, so this is going to wrap up part one of this global reset because I want to split this up into about two parts, each one about half an hour or so. In the second part, what I'm going to discuss is, again, what do we always hear, right? We always hear that how to monetize data is the most important thing of that most valuable asset every company owns is data about their clients, the spending behavior, spending habits. As I said, once this wicked parasitic class digitizes everything and none of us have any privacy about anything we spend money on, they are going to use that to control us. Because they will have the most valuable treasure trove of data in the entire world. 
They'll be able, what I'm going to speak about in the second part of this is how they're going to be able to use that data along with artificial intelligence to groom candidates to become presidents and prime ministers in nations across the world. So they'll have a total iron grasp upon the political process. Not that they don't have an iron grasp, but it's going to be air tight, hermetically sealed from this point forward if they get their great economic reset into motion as they plan to do. Because once they have access to our data, they can use AI to predict exactly what they want and then give it to us uh, as far as they'll give us the illusion. But of course, it'll be their candidates that they're putting in place in the political process, not only in the political process, much more dangerously, they'll have total control over the price behavior of all capital markets, including stock markets, real estate markets, bond markets, commodity markets. And I'll explain how they will do that in part. Two. So please do return to part two. I'm either going to make it like a premiere as I did with this podcast. Um, so I'll be online to, to uh, address some of your questions. Maybe I'll do a live one for the second one. Or if not, then I will just look at the questions you are entering and then type out answers um, as I did with this one. Okay, thanks so much for watching. And as always... Remain intensely curious because that is the only way to stay abreast of the truth. Take care until part two of the great global economic reset.